All right, lesson four is all about theming. If I come over here, I can toggle between dark or 90s or Dracula or material. I've also got these down here, but we'll get to that in a future video. So for now, I just want to focus on light system and dark. It's going to be very similar to what we did before when we talked about listening for a change, updating a data variable, and then letting that propagate throughout our, throughout our CSS. Now, there's a little bit more to it with that in the CSS side of stuff, but the JavaScript is very, very similar. So let's come over here. Let's start by adding some things in the second stack, which is this stack right over here. So we're going to actually add everything inside of what's called a field set. This will actually provide a little wrapper around these radio buttons. And I'm going to give this a class of radio wrapper. Again, we're not going to do anything with CSS here yet. We'll get around to that. But for now, I want to add a legend inside of here. This legend says what the field set is about. In this case, it's about the website theme. So if I go ahead and save this and jump back over this way, you'll see that now I've got a website theme with a little wrapper around it. Now below here, for each of the radio options, I'm going to add them inside of a class called radio. This is just for styling purposes, which we'll get around to again in a later video. Then each of these will have an input. These will be type of radio, and then they'll have a name. This name will be theme, and all the radios that are connected to the theme right here, this website theme, will all have the exact same name. Right, next, it needs to actually have an ID. This ID will be light in this case, and then I want to add a label like we've done before. So we'll do label for, this should point to the ID of light, and that way these two things are connected so that when I click on the label, it will actually check this radio button. This will be called light, and if I save it here, if I click on this, it should select that as light. Now I can just go ahead and copy this down, holding Option Shift and the down arrow, or Alt Shift and the down arrow, I think it is on Windows. And I'll grab all these and change these to System. And then I'll do the same thing one more time, and we'll change these to Dark. Okay, so now I've got three different options. If I click on Light, it goes Light, System, and Dark. I can also click, obviously, on the check boxes as well, or the radios as well, and those will select them. So that's all we're going to do right now in the HTML. Now next, what I want to do is handle this in JavaScript. So we're going to think about these types of radios inside of anything inside of our settings section. So once again, I'm going to come over here, and let's just go ahead and copy this down. Here we'll call these radios, and inside the settings, I want to grab anything with the type of radio. Now just like before, we looped through all the toggles, we're now going to loop through all the radios. In fact, if we really want to speed this up, we can grab all this, hit Command Shift in the down arrow, we're just going to switch out these toggles for radios. And then we'll call these, we can call these whatever we want, but each of them we'll call a radio. Now you could actually combine these and be a little fancier, but just to kind of make it really clear what we're doing, I'm going to separate these out because there's a little bit different way we're going to handle these. We no longer have a checked status. What we do have is an ID on each of them. So I'm going to grab the ID from each of them as well. And here we're going to update the name with the value of ID. So it would be like name is theme, value is light or dark or system. Same thing down here. So we're going to have the name and then whatever the ID is, like this. Now, because we've already done this before, we'll move a little bit faster. And now if I open up this application storage down here, if I toggle light, you'll see now the theme is light and the system is uh, whatever. Now the theme is system. Also, if I come back here to the elements tab, you'll see that I now have data theme equals system or equals dark or equals light. So again, this is what we did last time. Now just with the radio buttons because we made this handy little function here, it's doing all the heavy lifting for us up this way. Now, one thing to note is just as far as accessibility goes, if I come inside here, let's come over here, and I start tabbing through these, when I get to this, if I now use my arrow keys, either up, down, or right, left, it will actually toggle between these. You'll notice that on change, it's updating that for me. So another accessibility win for us without doing a whole lot of work on our part. Finally, what we need to do is jump over to the CSS and actually handle all of this change. So if I jump back up this way, Let's talk through the colors and the way I've set this up. So I've set up some default colors for light, and I set some default colors up for dark. Then what I've said is, what I'm going to use is these right here, background, text, primary, and I'll just point them to whatever variables I want them to use. So we've kind of got variables pointing to variables. So I've got a light set and a dark set, and by default, I'm going to point everything to light. Now, I've also got a color scheme, and this color scheme essentially changes the like form elements and the scroll bar. So if I change this to dark, for instance, you'll see that these all go dark, and that's just something the browser handles. So I'm actually also setting this as a default light as well. So what we want to do is override that when somebody selects something else. First of all, let's handle somebody's system settings. So a system setting by default will be light unless they happen to set their preferred color scheme to dark. In that case, I've got a media query that's built in. It's called prefers color scheme, and this would be dark. Now, when that's the case, I want to redeclare my root, 
And all I want to do is override that background text, primary accent, all this stuff. So I'm going to actually copy this and drop it in down here. And what I want to do is overwrite each of these. If I select a light and hit Command D, Command D, Command D, Command D, and Command D, I can change these all to dark. So now if I change my system to dark mode, everything on the website should also update to dark mode. So there you go. Now it's all in dark mode. So let's switch back to light mode because there's another time where I actually want it to be dark mode. And that is if I come down here and I add my data theme that we just added in the HTML. Remember when we selected this to dark, now it says data theme dark. Whenever this says data theme equals dark, now I also want to do the same thing. I want to grab the background, the text, the primary accent, all that, and change it all to dark. So I guess let's redo this. I could have just copied it up from above. So now whenever I have this at dark, it now sets everything to dark. If I change it to system, right now it doesn't know what system is, so it just goes to the default, which is my system, and then light, it does light. So we've done it for dark. I actually want to do the same thing now for light. So I'll come in here and change this to light, and I'll explain why we're doing this in a second. But for now, let me actually use this on my clipboard now. So what I'm saying is these are going to overwrite anything that's a preferred thing or anything that's a default thing. So for instance, if I'm in dark mode, so let me go ahead and switch my machine to dark mode, you can see that right now the light is overwriting it because I've declared this lower down in my CSS file. However, if I go to system, it doesn't know what system is, so it just ignores this and ignores this, and then it selects prefers color scheme dark because that's my preferred color scheme, so it's using my system settings. If I switch my system back to light mode, now it's in light mode. Now, even though my system is in light mode, if I select dark, what should happen? Well, it should prefer this right here because it's lower down again in the CSS file. So what we've done is basically set up a color theming system that when we get around to adding all our specialty ones later on in the series, it's really easy to update. All you do is update these because the background, the text, the primary, the accent one, the accent two, those are the things that are being used all throughout the document. Okay, so just in a couple of videos here, we've set up toggling motion, we've set up rounding, we're controlling these all with these data attributes, and now we've also got a website theming system. Now right now when I refresh, everything will just go back to whatever the default is because it's not actually loading this from local storage, but again, we will do that in a later video. In the next video, we're going to handle these custom accents. Now this will actually be a little bit different because we're not going to be adding a data attribute like data theme. We're going to be handling this with updating a CSS variable in the entire root of the document. So I'll see you in the next one for the custom accent color.